everyone. My name is Alan Baptista. I'm a product marketing manager here at Chef Progress. It is my great pleasure to be the moderator and facilitator for this conversation. We're going to be talking about Chef Compliance, an update story. We're basically going to be going through some of the key elements that we want to make sure that all of our customers and users are, uh, are aware of and up to date on the latest and greatest for Chef Compliance. I have the pleasure of having an esteemed panel of experts. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself, starting with Lokesh? Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Lokesh. I'm uh, currently handling uh, Chef Compliance uh, product portfolio as a senior product manager um, uh, for Inspect product line, uh, content team, and cloud resource pack team. So that's about me. Thanks. Thanks, Adam. Sharan? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sharon Riker. Uh, I'm also part of the product management group at Progress. Um, I'm working along with Lokesh um, and we are responsible for uh, um, uh, a bunch of things in terms of the roadmap as well as day-to-day -day operations uh, with respect to product on uh, Chef Compliance, uh, Inspect and uh, the content that we built in, yeah. Ashwini. Hello everyone, my name is Ashwini Nehate and I'm working on writing, uh, creating audits and remediations and working in compliance team. Thank you. Don? Hi, Don Slenick here. I'm a senior sales engineer uh, for the West Coast. All right, thank you everyone. Here's what we're gonna basically cover. Uh, I'm gonna be starting with talking about the, the need for balancing speed and compliance and why chef compliance is so important. Then we're gonna go into a little deeper and talk about chef compliance and beyond some uh, aggregated information, some pieces around chef compliance and why it's so important uh, for organizations to consider adopting this, this solution. We'll do a quick demo, kind of a Q&A back and forth between a couple of our experts. And then we're ultimately gonna dive into the compliance roadmap on what, what's the latest and greatest, what's come out and what is uh, forthcoming, what we can expect to look forward to. So now why don't we get started? Well, there is this need for um, sometimes plugging security holes feels like, or, or when you're working for compliance, it really feels like you're plugging holes into a into a dam, really. If you're driving um, this compliance and security systems, that sometimes it feels like you're plugging those holes in the dam, where once you plug in one hole and then you get another one and another one pops up and you have to go run and, 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 and patch that hole. So ultimately, it's as if, uh, if you are finding compliance failures in production, you're definitely failed as an organization, as a security institution, and definitely as, as an InfoSec organization. So there is definitely, there's a need for the speed, um, for speed to deliver innovation. There's a need for new code or new business value is, is ultimately at an all time high. And every organization is trying to bring their applications, their business solutions, or ultimately value to uh, customers and shareholders to market a lot faster. But the speed, but, but with the speed ultimately comes at what cost to the organization? Is it at the cost of quality of what is being put out there? Or even worse, is it the cost of security of our systems and our environments? There's a, there's a delicate balance or a need for a delicate balance between the need for speed and the ability to do so in a secure and compliant way. So why is there that, that difficulty in balancing so, is, is, is it, why is it so hard? Even Gartner agrees with us that the balance, to balance speed and risk uh, is needed and it is ultimately achieved by leveraging automation and implementing what we like to call compliance as code. So we'll go a little bit more into why it's important to have this concept of compliance as code in a bit of few minutes. <clears throat> so that need for security ultimately and compliance for that matter is and as it should be, as it should be non-negotiable which in many cases causes impediments to the ability of the organization to deliver with speed. Because among, of the, among these many reasons, security reviews are typically done at the end of this very long delivery process when most slippages and delays have put the security review in tremendous pressure to happen and not impede the delivery of that said solution and innovation. 
ultimately audits also, which is a way to, to validate compliance, take away the valuable productive time that staff have to work on that said innovation or business value. Having to concentrate on manual and many times cumbersome audit processes is very time consuming and very, com and, and very uh, um, counterproductive in, in a way. And even when done appropriately, the current security and compliance efforts or processes provide this limited visibility and hinder the, that collaboration between the teams, which in many cases causes undue risk to, to our environments and the security and compliance of that. The, perception, the prevailing perception is that InfoSec policies slow things down. Even a, a recent uh, Gartner report highlights that there were 81% of IT professionals agree that InfoSec policies inhibit agility and speed. And even 77% of the security professional themselves uh, agree that that policy slows things down. So it's ultimately the perception is reality here that things are slowed down by the existing processes. <clears throat> well, and why is that? Well, despite the velocity, the gains by other teams, uh, such as Agile and DevOps practices, um, InfoSec teams are still lagging behind. And that the, the continuous demand to increase speed and potentially amplifies these existing uh, issues. Breaches take a long time to find and uh, exploitations occur on known vulnerabilities. And that the remediation that takes time uh, the radiation that is needed also takes time to compete to to complete. Uh, fifty six percent of the breaches took months or longer to, to to discover. In the Verizon data breach report of two thousand nineteen, or actually since two thousand fourteen, we've seen that more than ninety percent of the exploits observed only use nine known vulnerabilities. So it's not that people don't know what they're what they're vulnerable against. It's that it's very difficult to find the, the, those things. In a recent uh, IDG survey that, that uh, Chef conducted in, in late 2020, uh, we found that most companies take about two months to actually complete that compliance security audit we talked about. Very uh, time consuming, very manual, very uh, cumbersome process. And even though that those audits are taking place, 73% of the companies uh, have released vulnerabilities at least one time a year. So even though all that effort is being put in, to, to uh, in, into keeping your security into your system secure, it is still causing organizations to release vulnerabilities, knowingly so. So it's a very the continue, It's very very difficult, really, for uh, for organizations to 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 hamper and have a, a completely locked down system. And like we talked about earlier, that traditional approach really exacts, exacerbates the pain because. The, the security reviews which are done at the end of the process are very time consuming, are manual, are slow. They use uh, scanning tools that generate a lot of false uh, data, a lot of noise and, and a lot of difficult processes to really um, identify and, and hone in on those compliance and security issues. We may even catch problems too late in the development cycle. Where it's, where it's a lot more difficult and more expensive to solve. And really hard to manage those uh, systems or, or those exceptions and those waivers are, is a very difficult way. So we here at Propose at Chef have, have, have come up with Chef Compliance, which is ultimately the way that we envision um, how you best solve these issues of manual compliance, uh, of manual uh, audits and, and very time consuming process. So, so as we go through um, the next steps, I wanna make sure that you understand that this is our kind of solution to all these problems that we've forementioned, that we mentioned before. Lokesh? All right, uh, thanks, Helen. Uh, yes, I do agree. Uh, security reviews done at the end is really painful process and a cumbersome uh, thing. Um, having said that, the continuous compliance uh, helps to close this uh, gaps. So on continuous compliance, uh, if you see, we have different CIS benchmarks and stick benchmarks for uh, operating systems, DB systems, web servers, etc. So users have to define the baseline at the initial phase and uh, run it on their uh, infra side. So if the audit results, let's say if it's 100% pass uh, at the past at the first uh, try itself, then it is 100% compliant. So in an ideal scenario, it won't be uh, it won't be like that. So 
there will be certain controls uh, which will be failing and uh, users have to remedy the controls that are failing uh, some controls can be fixed uh, right away uh, some needs uh, time to fix or users can also put an exception uh, for these controls by applying waivers based on proper business continuity measures and policies in place so when you repeat the same process for different types of systems uh, trying to be compliant uh, then the continuous compliance is achieved in uh, 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 with, along with different systems in the infra so this is the workflow we have come up and it has been widely appreciated uh, uh, by our customers and our partners as well um, yeah so this is about uh, continuous compliance uh, compliance let's let's switch gears about uh, uh, chef compliance and uh, different uh, workflow in uh, chef compliance so the first uh, phase in chef compliance it's like it's an acquire phase uh, so in, in in acquire phase customers get access to the premium content and decide which profiles to apply for their uh, compliance need basically it's a groundwork done by uh, customers to uh, set the baselines so customers can can get started quickly with uh, the help of chef audit content for uh, cas and uh, cas and uh, stick benchmarks so this is on the acquire phase um, the second one is on the uh, define phase so chef makes it uh, easy to define uh, compliant baselines and tune tune them to uh, organizations organizations uh, unique compliance needs uh, users with the help of maybe with waiver features uh, they can turn on uh, turn on or off individual controls with proper justifications so this is on the define phase uh, define phase to define the baseline uh, third phase is on the uh, detect phase so in detect phase uh, it's basically an audit uh, to continuously monitor and evaluate compliance postures by detecting uh, deviations if if there are any uh, if there are any misconfigurations from the intended state uh, in the uh, from the software delivery life cycle so this is on the detect phase and the fourth the, the critical one uh, which most of the customers um, um, are looking for uh, it's on the remediate phase so in remediate uh, it's 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 uh, uh, audit just just doing audit is not enough you have to remediate the failed controls or non compliant controls so in remediate uh, the uh, non compliant controls or mis misconfigurations are fixed so uh, by by uh, chef remediate content this can be done uh, seamlessly easily and without uh, having any coding expert expertise or coding skills so that is a key advantage we have uh, with uh, chef remediation and the last one it's on the reporting phase uh, this is to uh, have have like a comprehensive dashboard and and also to have up to date visibility on uh, heterogeneous assets or uh, different sets of uh, uh, infra um, and also to view different compliant resource uh, resources uh, resources and reports based on notes based on controls like past controls past notes fail controls fail notes skip controls so these are the different reporting aspects uh, we we have uh, in the reporting phase um so yeah this is about the five uh, 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 five phases of uh, chef compliance um, and uh, uh, and let's see the key advantages of uh, chef compliance in uh, next slide so on top three advantages quick time to value lower context switching and lower code the first advantage on quick time to value uh, by leveraging our uh, premium audit and remediate content uh, to address the compliance of compliance needs of the organizations and the two uh, without any additional coding needed in understanding the compliance posture or uh, or for mitigating the deviations uh, that is the quick time to value uh, benefit second advantage i mean like lower context switching to perform faster audits uh, this means like user can edit the policies on the go from the workstation itself uh, through our inspect tool uh, which is a very flexible tool and uh, they can also view the results in automate uh, quickly so on third advantage uh, lower code uh, one can easily set up the audit and remedy at environment without coding knowledge or expertise um, so that is a key uh, uh, advantage uh, for lower code uh, so these are the key values of chef compliance product now let's see how the remediation works with uh, chef compliance so on remediation uh, i would like to start with an analogy Uh, let's say if you are a personal uh, user uh, and you have a pc in your pc when you have an antivirus software you run scan on your pc to identify malware uh, viruses and other threats 
so once the threats are identified these threats are alleviated by dele deleting the virus or by quarantining it so if the virus is not remediated either by deleting or putting it by quarantine then pc is not 100% secure so on the same note if your system or your infrastructure has been monitored or audited for threats breaches risks or or any misconfigurations uh, and if these risks and threats left unremediated then the system is not 100% compliant or or 100% secure so the point here is remediation is 100% necessary to resolve the risk uh, identified uh, from uh, from the audit uh, uh, side so with with shift compliance automation uh, users get access to audit as well as to remedy the system the first key benefit on remediation it's like it remedies system by maintaining the continuous compliance principles second benefit of remediation is to uh, reduce the time taken to remedy remedy threats from uh, uh, from uh, months to weeks to hours so that is the uh, key benefit of uh, remediation and then the the third one is like user need not waste time in chasing false positives uh, you can also get to know the reasons for failures quickly at each control level at each node uh, node level uh, from the scanned results and then you can also zero in on each results from uh, each control level uh, understand what is the root cause of the failure and remedy remedy them with uh, less manual inter intervention so these are the key aspects of uh, remediation and uh, and we have uh, we have uh, highlighted the uh, structure how the remediation uh, will look uh, like so user can enable or enable scan or remediation by simply setting the flag uh, uh, run run colon true so then the remediation will start up, uh, get getting applied uh, for each control so having said that about remediation now uh, let's see how skip controls and uh, waivers work in the uh, next slide so moving on to skip controls uh, so when a user does audit uh, there are x number of controls which will get passed y number of controls which it get, which will get failed the failed controls have to be remediated what if i don't want to run a specific number of controls or how to bypass or exclude these controls so then skip skip control feature comes in place uh, skip control feature helps to exclude the particular set of controls and uh, user need not create a separate copy of uh, uh, cookbooks to run particular set of controls to uh, the, which which they needed uh, so this is the usage structure of uh, uh, skip controls which we have mentioned uh, here uh, uh, so the so skip control baseline 2 so that baseline 2 control will be excluded uh, from the audit uh, all right having understood the usage pattern um, uh, let us know the limitation of skip control feature so what if a user uh, wants to uh, know how long ago the skip was implemented what if a user wants to know the justification for skip control this can't be done on the uh, these features or these items cannot be done on skip control feature and uh, to support this we have implemented or we have launched wave feature waiver feature so waiver feature is an interesting feature uh, to achieve this uh, uh, aspects so let's see uh, about waiver features next slide yeah so on waiver feature uh, uh, this is similar to skip control but it has more additional benefits so now the typical use cases uh, when a security officer has granted a waiver for two months uh, for a particular uh, set of controls uh, these set of controls will be skipped during the period and the key benefit here is it will get re-enabled for auditing once the expiration date time is over so uh, waivers uh, fulfills the purpose of skip controls uh, by allowing customers to provide a business justification for controls against which they are unable to be uh, uh, compliant so once uh, uh, one can also uh, specify an end date to track when control should be remedied or a leave it blank when the waiver is uh, permanent so the key parameters here is like expiration date run and justification parameter uh, and uh, expiration date is uh, uh, is optional if the expiry, expiration date is not set then it, then the waiver is uh, applicable to be permanent and uh, run uh, is also option optional if, if it's present and true then the control will be uh, ran and reported but the failures in it won't make the overall run uh, fail but if it's absent or false the the control will not be run so that is a critical thing to be noted here in waiver and uh, on the justification it's just like a text um, uh, you want and uh, might include a reason as well as who who signed up on the uh, waiver uh, so these are the three critical param parameters in uh, waiver. Uh, now we have got an idea about remediate, skip controls versus wave control. 
now let's see the uh, important aspect on data feed uh, how it works with external third parties so the data feed service uh, sends uh, no data to a third party service like splunk kibana service now etc so now what information or what data will be sent to uh, these third party services from uh, uh, from chef uh, there are three critical aspects here one on compliance aspects like compliance state of each node uh, information on pass controls fail controls skip controls uh, wave controls the on compliance aspect this information will be sent second on uh, data gathered from ohai plugin on each managed node like hardware info uh, operating system info and other programs uh, which have been installed in the system so these info will be uh, sent third on configuration information like uh, each man managed node like client run status run list cookbooks and recipes again each node so these are the information which which will get fed to data the uh, option through uh, uh, to uh, to the third party uh, apps so a uh, data feed operates by doing the following like uh, it runs for every 4 hours the data feed service will aggregate the client runs and the compliance report from the previous 4 hours and send the information to the registered destinations so the time interval here is 4 hours by default it can be configured uh, according to the business need as well as well uh, the data aggregates and uh, sends uh, the sends in like batches Uh, of 50 nodes um, at at a time so the batch amount is like 50 by default but again this is also configurable so on on compliance report views so what what gets viewed from uh, data feed it's like compliance report views so user can able to view the entire report per server level per node level and per profile level so these are the uh, uh, different views they they will get uh, and uh, one other interesting uh, fact here is like they can also create workflows to trigger remediation and uh, close the issues so on the right hand side if you if you see like uh, it shows a flow diagram for data feed information from uh, chef clients uh, how it is collected and uh, how uh, and, and sent to automate and then it has been converted into event triggers and fed into third party services like uh, service now or splunk so then with this details workflow can be created to remedy issues and again these details are sent back to automate uh this is the workflow of the data feed option all right so we have looked into remediation waivers uh, data feed option theoretically let's right now uh, deep dive on the uh, demo side uh, which would be done by don and dashini uh, uh, over to you don and dashini awesome well thank you very much for all that overview um and i'm excited ashwini to um kind of show this in practice and take a look at what it means to actually work with it Um so as part of kind of the presentation we talked a lot about controls and kind of managing controls and how to wave them and things like that but um what kind of profiles or pre-built groupings do we have of controls Uh yes uh, uh don so like uh, we have a profiles related to uh various benchmark uh which is dependent upon CI and string and dependent upon OS so currently we have windows um then it's mac of uh, centos linux red hat and uh, actually uh, we can uh, see the available profiles in chef automate and we can just move to the compliance tab in profiles and here we go like uh, the available profiles and we can actually check uh, like which all profiles we have so uh, it's uh, ai and amazon linux apache tomcat um, yeah and also dependent upon the cloud we have an azure foundation Uh, benchmark too so yeah uh, so all these profiles we can uh, have uh, like it's available on automate and we just need to get these profiles from this uh, from this uh, uh, while clicking this get and it's uh, it will be available here uh, in profiles so currently uh, i have just uh, get all this profiles and these are available so uh, this all profiles i can do auditing on nodes yeah awesome and um you know say i'm part of an organization and we use stig as um part of part of how we do compliance are there profiles for that cover stig yes for stig we have actually uh, like we can showcase all these profiles which are related to strigs in available so the and it's like a it, we have like uh, almost uh, for windows uh, 10 to 
2019 and windows server 2016 these all profiles are been uh, related to stakes and we can move to here and we can check like uh, it's been yeah so i'm able to see here so the sources and the stick profiles are being uh, available here so we just need to get it and it's ready to audit excellent and now um say you know i want to perform an audit um how would i do that with chef automate and can you kind of guide us through how that would look like yeah, this is the important point. Like uh, first, we have to um, do the settings in Node integration. So currently, I have added my Node in Azure. So we just need to uh, make and uh, create an integration depending upon our cloud. So I will choose Azure and add uh, our client ID, our secret ID, and tenant ID, and then uh, just uh, associate its tag. So this tag means it's a credential for our node, which we can already, so I, we can see like here, we have added for SRBN and VNRM. So this credentials has been added in node credentials. So uh, it's easier to uh, get uh, like nodes can be uh, SHH or VNRM with the help of this credential. And once we have uh, this node integration is done, so we can move to compliance and uh, job we can select the scan job and we can create a scan job so so this will uh, create one so 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 currently we have added in azure vm and uh, for a demo purpose we can take for suze 15 node so i'm just adding a tag here And once we are uh, done a selection, um, we can move to next. And as we are uh, working on uh, CIS SLS 15, so I'm just choosing this benchmark, so which I have already been get from available profile and we'll move to next. And I will just say like suit. So here we are, have an option, like uh, we can set a scan, scan job at particular time uh, interval. So currently I, have, I haven't added any time, so it will run quickly without any um, interval. So we can see how it's running. So meanwhile, I can show an, another scan job, which I, I have already been a scan. So this is the previous scan job which I have worked on, like created on. And in report, we can see like this has been uh, ran and our node got failed because uh, some of the controls are being failed. So here we have to choose from node. This is our node, so say 15. Yeah, and, and while this is loading, um, you know, a lot of organizations as they run these reports, it's really critical for them to communicate that. Um, are you able to communicate like the historical results or is it mainly just the, the results running currently? Yes, we can uh, we can have an historical results. Like uh, you can see like previously in a scan job, I was able to see various scans. So this is a previous scan, which I have uh, loaded yesterday, created yesterday, and we are able to see these results. So currently we can see like 120 controls are been failed. Uh, this is a fresh VM and that's why lots of controls are been failed and 92 has been passed and, and 19 has been skimmed. So, so yeah, uh, but if we see this uh, type of uh, icon, it's been failed and uh, we can see like why it's been failed. It, uh, we can see like, uh, what they expected and why it's been failed, what we have got output from a node. So, and if we get a blue check mark, that means it's been passed, the appropriate value is been matching. And if you have to see like, what's the source code, uh, like uh, what has been written in the audit, we can able to see in the source tab also. Yeah. So this, this of the commands are being uh, passed and this was failed. So that was the reason. Mm, yeah. And for the skip controls, uh, so we can see 19 skip controls are been there. So this is the uh, control. 
So currently we don't have an uh, audits for this. So it's been skipped and in, uh, in this uh, source we have written the script. So no test has been defined. And yes, yeah, that's all like we can do in audit. Awesome. And now say, I know we talked a little bit earlier about um, doing uh, temporary waivers on controls and um, you know how when they expire, it starts checking again. Uh, what does that look like with an automate? Uh, yeah. So in automate, uh, the the scan where we currently are, we are able to see like this is a wave control is zero. So what we can do, like we have, if we have to wave some controls, we can uh, wave through an uh, audit profile. Hello? Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. So uh, I've just, uh, so we have just added uh, in my, so I have just uh, created a customized cookbook of audit, which actually depends upon audit cookbook, which is uh, provided in supermarket, uh, which is available in supermarket. I'm just, uh, and I have just made some changes in uh, and customized cookbook where I have just added a uh, compliance phase as true and reporter as shape server automate and shape server. Uh, so the, uh, so this uh, so once we run this cookbook, uh, we can able to wave off some, uh, for currently we have taken this profile as uh, CI as a CLS 15 and we have added this version and the wave file. So this has been, uh, this has been copied to an, a node uh, at this location. So, so this is my node. And if I run, so yeah, this is a workstation and I have just added I've just uploaded a cookbook there on Chef Workstation. This is like nice, not sure. So actually we can, um, with a knife note show, Suze 15. So we are able to see like I have uh, uh, added the uh, my audit cookbook in the run list and I will just run a shape client here uh, in in Anor. And once we run the shape client, so we have added this waiver file on our shape node. We can use uh, uh, shape resources like a remote file resource. Um, and we can just move this uh, our cookbook uh, waiver file uh, from uh, shape of station to shape node. And once this is ran, so we can see like shape, uh, shape infra client has been finished. And this report actually get fetched from node to an shape server and shape server gives an uh, information to uh, uh, shape automate and we are able to see on shape ui so these are current nodes and now i can see um, three nodes 
So this is one minute ago result. Where we can see a wave which is loading. Yeah. So this is the current scene. And we can say these two controls are being waved off. And here it's the reason. So not able to remedy it. And we have added just this as the temporary result. And uh, what is the expiry date? And this source code is in this. So over to that. Excellent. Um, no, and that, I can see that definitely being a feature many, many organizations uh, will find useful. Um, now, one thing when we look at compliance, it's always a little scary when you see a whole bunch of those red, uh, red X's and the red failures of different controls. Uh, what are some of the options that we have to re remediate those? Is Chef able to actually go in and fix some of those compliance failures for me? Yes, definitely. Chef has this uh, ability to fix these uh, controls. So uh, we have a girl just apply on Chef Node and we are able to run that. So I'm just, uh, so currently I have uploaded um, this cookbook. So if I try to upload it again, it will just update the uh, latest cookbook, which I have on Chef Workstation. And then I just need to add that cookbook into my run list. So currently I have my audit and remediation CIS Linux Enterprise 15 cookbook. And just I will, so it's been now, uh, added to a node, I will just run a shape line and we are able to remedy key controls. I'm just deleting the cache uh, in case of any issue. And I have run the shape line now. So here we can see this cookbook has been running. So here we can see we have Android list ready. And this is remediating uh, each control. So whatever the remediation scripts are written, if uh, we don't have any remediation script, then it will just print an echo like we, we are, don't have an automated uh, remediation script. So we need to just do it manually. It will, uh, it will take some time to just upload this. Um, so uh, currently we have all this remediations. We are, so currently we are running for SLS 15, but we do have revelation for Windows 10, Windows Server 2019, Windows Server 2016. and Mac 10.14 and Mac 10.50. I guess it's for 10.13 yeah. So once this uh, uh, cookbook remediation has been done, it will take, uh, so it will cover two 
211 controls and then uh, our audit cookbook will run and it will uh, grab all this information from our node to chef server and from chef server it will just get into chef automate uh, yeah so for chef automate we have to do some uh, more settings to uh, on chef server we have to do some more state settings to get all this information be provided to chef server so So yes, um, cookbook has been ran and it's been uh, audit cookbook has also been ran. So here we can see like our generated report is 1.0 MB and uh, the automate has this limitation of 2 MB. So if it extend, it will not give a proper result on automate UI. So let's go to automate UI and just check to reports. And when it's in report, we can just check in one profiles, nodes, and this is our three minute ago node, we can see. We can say this is the latest uh, scan. And uh, uh, 60, uh, 166 from, uh, from uh, 92 controls, 166 controls are being uh, passed. And we have, uh, we can see like it's been passed, this first 1.1 control. So all the statements have been passed after doing some remediations. And uh, currently we have waived one of the control in this node. So we can see only this control is going on. And for this 45 controls, we do actually have this remediation as manually because it's related to mounting wear uh, or mounting time, and which is not uh, uh, possible current, in current scenario. So we are looking into it to have a remediation, but uh, yeah, it's currently skipped. So all this control, if we don't want to see a failure, we can add into waived control. So uh, for just uh, meanwhile, I've just added one control uh, in the wait. Excellent. So that's that's really handy that you can have some be auto remediated and some still um, kind of be manually uh, remediated. You know, depending on how sensitive it is. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so we've kind of worked through the whole process. So we've you know we've identified where we're uh, where the compliance issues were. Um, you know, we've we've managed some of those with waivers and. Um, some of them with skip controls. Uh, we've done the remediation. You know, when we talk about um, communicating that data out, you know, definitely reports are important. But um, you know, when we talk about doing a data feed out to like a service now or another type of third party tool, um, can you kind of give us a little bit more detail about how that works and what that might look like? Yes, sure. Yeah. So uh, currently we have ju just added this um, in and service now for that we need to integrate uh, data feed URL uh, in automate UI to give all this information from automate uh, from automate to service now. So which actually can be set from uh, here settings, we can move to settings and then a data field. Uh, we, so I have added uh, this automate test. Uh, so um, so where we have to add a data field URL, which we can see here, and the details. So if we see to create a new data field, all these entries we need to add uh, in username password to, uh, and then we can just test our data field URL is working fine from here. And uh, it will just atom, um, automatically give all uh, reports from automate to service now. And this actually looks here. So this is a node which has been run. Um, so in service now URL, we can move to uh, this uh, so search box and we can just type a shape and we can list all these stars. Or, uh, automate fields like automate instant shape server sh uh, shape infra client run so which uh, uh, so once we run and 
once we run and shift client on any node all our information is been uh, uh, been fetched here and we can see the result and start time data and it actually looks like this so we have an id node id and this is our fqdn uh, and fqdn of node and what cookbooks has been ran so uh, so previously we have just this is the previous uh, ran which was like a, it has an audit uh, my audit cookbook which actually depends upon audit cookbook that's why we can see a run in run this uh, we have two cookbooks and uh, the, the one more point is like uh, we need to have an data field uh, interval uh, we need to set uh, uh, at a particular amount on in on automate where which we can see um, so this is my automate and data field patch this is the field interval so currently i have uh, so for demo purpose i have added this one minute so m represent as one uh, so it depend upon the organization uh, benchmark they can add as one hour four hours uh, one second yeah so for uh, so to reflect our data uh, in from automate to service now i have added this entry as one minute and um, we can see like compliance profiles, which compliance profile is ran. So currently we have ran SLS 15 compliance profile and all the entries of uh, SLS 15 profile benchmark has been added here and digital controls we have. So uh, we can see this controls. What is been the code inside it and its location. And this is the compliance controls. So this compliance profile is there and these are the compliance controls which has actually all the controls present in that profile. Here also we can see the source code what source code is there and what's the location if I just move into that and if you want to uh, import some of the uh, report if we so if we have an automated report and if we want to import it we can import from here you can just add a new and just click there and add the detailed information in there and the imported data can be seen here from where and which profile has been run and what's uh, what platform and what's the job ID and status of it in time and start time and which version it's been run. So yes, um, yeah, so this, this all things we can do in this data frame and we can just uh, take all the reports and uh, uh, it and uh, this is so uh, so nice like we don't have to uh, maintain our, our reports uh, we, we just need to just add the data feed url and it will automatically fetch all our reports here and it will maintain into uh, uh, yeah and the one more point is uh, the, all this data is maintained from an admin user only so yeah that and on i'm done for my part Excellent. Well, yeah, thank you very much, Ashwini, for showing us that. And uh, yeah, we'll hand it off to the uh, presentation team. Great demo. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate that. <clears throat> now um, we're going to hand it off to uh, the long awaited. Uh, we want to talk about the roadmap for Chef Compliance coming soon. Sharon, you're in. Sure. Um, thank you, Alan, um, and uh, thank you, Don and uh, Ashwini, for a very uh, informative and uh, a very comprehensive end-to-end -end, uh, chef compliance uh, lifecycle demo. Um, let me speak about uh, uh, the uh, chef compliance roadmap. Um, and uh, 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 from a roadmap perspective, there are basically uh, 
uh, three major areas that we are focusing on uh, for the second half of uh, the financial year 2021. Uh, the first major uh, aspect is really um, the active maintenance of um, the cloud target scanning, uh, wherein we are building and uh, building on more uh, cloud resource packs in terms of uh, all the three major cloud providers, AWS, GCP, as well as Azure. Uh, we're also expanding on our content generation process. We'll be um, adding more content to the existing portfolio uh, from both the CIS as well as the strict benchmark perspective. Um, and finally, we are also looking to set up an SLA to keep our content up to date uh, uh, based on the changes which are made by uh, the benchmark providers. Um, apart from uh, the content tradition, uh, one of the uh, key features we are also looking at is uh, to fasten the overall pace of uh, content generation, uh, basically automating the whole process of uh, generation of the content. Um, and this will really help us in um, eliminating any of the manual dependencies that we may have in the uh, content generation process. It also helps us to uh, meet the SLAs uh, uh, um, appropriately. Uh, in terms of SLA, um, uh, basically, uh, we are looking at a very um, dedicated timelines in terms of uh, uh, releasing uh, the updates uh, to the existing contents which are made by uh, the benchmark providers. Uh, that's basically if uh, CIs or the STIG, uh, if they update their benchmarks uh, with a newer version, uh, we would like to have an SLA uh, or basically a time duration uh, by which we update our uh, content. Um, and apart from the content, uh, we are also looking at uh, enhancements on the Inspec end. Uh, Inspec is our open source language that we use uh, for describing uh, security as well as the compliance rules. And uh, on the Inspec side, uh, we are looking at uh, uh, one is we have a, a huge community following on the Inspec side. Uh, we are looking to reduce a bunch of community issues on the uh, on the Inspec front. Uh, where the community friends have, uh, um, you know, they have raised a certain set of issues. We are we are looking to kind of gently reduce uh, or kind of overcome those uh, issues. Uh, we are also looking to support uh, newer DB resources. Um, this will really help us in uh, uh, supporting the uh, the newer DB styles or the DB systems such as MongoDB, uh, Postgres, as well as MS SQL. Uh, we are also uh, looking to support. Uh, cook style within Inspec. Uh, this will really help uh, customers in terms of um, uh, in terms of uh, having better validation as well as uh, uh, improvement in terms of uh, how they write their uh, Inspec uh, code. Uh, and finally, on the Inspec end, we are expanding our operating system architecture and platform support. We continue to uh, support newer uh, OS and platforms. Uh, this will really help us in adding um, more profiles, more content uh, as we go ahead. Uh, in the journey of uh, Chef Compliance. Uh, and finally, um, on in terms of the Chef Automate, which, which is our uh, visibility dashboard um, uh, that, that Chef Compliance uses, um, we are basically looking at two aspects. One is we are really looking at uh, um, the data which is uh, exported out of Automate, which is basically the data feed. Uh, uh, we are looking at enhancements and improvements here. So data from uh, uh, Automate, or your compliance data uh, can be exported into ServiceNow for incident management, or it can be also moved to uh, Splunk and Kibana uh, for the monitoring aspects. Um, one of the customer feedbacks that we also received on the Chef Automate was uh, there was a restriction in terms of the amount of data uh, that can be input or that can be fed into the Automate system uh, from the compliance. Um, and that's something that we are also looking to overcome. Um, and uh, that will be a very key feature which will help uh, a bunch of our uh, customers. Um, and with that, I move on to uh, the next slide wherein uh, wherein I'll cover some of the content that we delivered in 2020. Um, so in 2020, we supported a bunch of uh, uh, content uh, or the profiles. Um, we added support for newer versions of uh, operating systems for Debian, um, CentOS, uh, Red Hat Linux, um, Windows, um, as well as Mac. Uh, newer versions of database systems, we added support for Oracle 12th, uh, PostgreSQL, um, as well as MS SQL uh, 2016. Um, we also supported newer versions of web servers, uh, Tomcat, um, Nginx, as well as uh, Apache. Uh, and finally, uh, the VMware ESXi on the uh, hypervisor end uh, was also added. 
Uh, we also added support for uh, on the container security uh, end, um, as well as uh, you know, with support for CI's benchmarks for uh, Docker, as well as the enterprise edition of uh, the Kubernetes. Uh, and finally, we accomplished the support for um, AWS, as well as uh, the GCP uh, resource packs. With that, I move on to the content for uh, or the content roadmap for 2021. Um, in the first half of this year, um, uh, we continue to focus on adding the remediate as well as the audit contents, both on the C, uh, CIS as well as the stick end. Um, on the DB systems, uh, the two major um, areas that we concentrated on was the MS SQL Server 2019 as well as uh, uh, MongoDB. Uh, we released some of the newer versions of web servers, specifically Apache Tomcat 9 uh, on the Windows server, as well as the desktop. Um, we added support for Windows 10, Windows 2019. Um, SUSE Linux 15 was uh, another addition to our profile list. Uh, that was something added in the uh, first half of uh, the year. Um, we continue to add uh, and build our uh, cloud target scanning. We added more support for uh, both AWS as well as uh, the Azure resource packs. Um, and from the second half of uh, the year, uh, we will concentrate on uh, uh, adding more versions of, or, or supporting newer versions of the target system. Uh, specifically on the DB systems, and we are uh, looking at um, MS SQL Server 2017 and uh, the Oracle databases 19C as well as uh, 12C. Um, we'll also be adding new versions of uh, the web servers, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, Apache Tomcat 9, where we'll be supporting the remediation part of it. Um, and uh, on the Linux operating systems, uh, we are also looking at uh, um, helping um, uh, produce content for Ubuntu 2004, as well as for uh, Red Hat Linux 8. Um, and finally, on the Mac desktop, uh, that was um, something that we are uh, concentrating, um, uh, you know, significantly in the second half, uh, wherein we plan to add more uh, support for Apple Mac OS 11 uh, as part of the audit content. Um, so apart from just the content, uh, we are also um, uh, looking to uh, significantly enhance our uh, resource packs, uh, continue to building and adding more resource packs for uh, AWS. Um, Azure, as well as uh, the GCP. And with that, I uh, move on to some of the customer stories um, uh, that, that uh, where we have seen results uh, from the Chef Compliance. And um, I want to uh, focus on the first compliance story, which is uh, basically uh, a fintech org. Uh, it's a fintech enterprise uh, which which produces or which helps. Um, uh, which has more than 300 products and services, uh, and they are basically a financial processing group um, uh, helping um, you know enterprises with uh, financial processing. Uh, they had a very uh, complex environment, um, and they had a very complex task of really um, maintenance of their uh, um, operating system compliance, uh, remediation of the target systems, uh, and they were not having a, a visual representation uh, into their compliance state. Uh, they also needed to manage hundreds of uh, configurations across all their systems, which which ran into um, thousands uh, in in numbers. Um, so they basically used the Chef uh, Compliance Automation Suite with uh, all of its components, uh, starting from Automate, uh, which is basically the Chef Automate. Uh, with with Chef Automate, they got an instant visibility into their compliance state of their entire fleet in one place. Uh, without really uh, needing to go into more custom reports um, that they used to use earlier. Uh, they used Chef Infra. Uh, Chef Infra really helped them to manage the configs, uh, proactively remediate uh, without really causing any kind of configuration drift uh, and eliminating any um, constant requests they used to get for, um, you know, kind of repetitive remediation process uh, procedures. Um, and finally, they used Chef Inspect. Uh, this really helped them to uh, test their fleet uh, determine what's really compliant and what is not, um, and uh, avoid the um, reliance on uh, periodic vulnerability scans that they used to rely on previously, um, and which obviously led to um, excessive resource consumption. Um, so now with Chef Inspect, they um, kind of avoided um, a, a bunch of those uh, problem points. 
Um, moving on to the second uh, growth story or the second customer success story, uh, we have Hamantech. Hamantech is a, a cyber security firm. Uh, it's involved in really helping enterprises protect uh, against uh, insider threats as well as uh, cyber attack. Um, and uh, they came to us uh, with the need that they wanted to meet um, uh, PCI as well as uh, the DSS compliance uh, with respect to uh, the various solutions they were uh, releasing. Uh, they also wanted to um, automate the Docker or the um, environment provisioning, as well as they wanted to um, uh, kind of gently manage their uh, uh, manage their uh, virtual machine systems as well. Um, so with with Chef Inspect and uh, Chef Automate, they could really build a, a fully automated self configuring uh, architecture, uh, and they also got a end to end visibility. Um, and what it really meant is uh, they could now uh, really deploy their um, uh, some of their payment tokenization systems as well as uh, the PCI solutions. Uh, they could really deploy it anywhere in the world uh, in a matter of few minutes um, while maintaining the PCI compliance. Uh, they could quickly uh, automate uh, uh, the infrastructure provisioning for uh, uh, their Docker environment as well. Uh, so basically what haven't they got was uh, they could really deploy a fully operational stack within uh, 10 minutes, within a few minutes uh, from days which they were earlier incurring. Uh, and they pretty much also kind of ensured a, a zero data loss over a period of uh, five years. Uh, all of this really helped them to um, kind of concentrate on a, a rapid growth mission, uh, as well as uh, the scale of customers that they were targeting uh, over these years. So, uh, that was pretty much the have and tech. And uh, with that, I finally uh, come into, um, um, you know, I would like you all to meet the, uh, the team behind Chef Compliance, um, our team of developers, uh, engineering managers, as well as product managers. Uh, it's their hard work and commitment uh, that's really helped build the Chef Compliance uh, product for you. Um, yeah, but, uh, that's pretty much from my end. And uh, with that, I hand over back to Alan. Great, great, thank you. Um, it's been an incredible, uh, Sharon, thank you for that. It, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, as you've seen, a lot of the customers have already started using our solutions and bringing incredible compliance and security solutions to market. Um, we've covered a lot of materials here. It's been a little over an hour now. Um, if you have any questions while you were listening to this, um, our experts will be monitoring the Chef a community channel on Slack. So make sure to post your questions there um, and they will engage with you during this, uh, during, during uh, Chef Compliance or, or Chef Conf 21, as this is being recorded previously. Um, you can comment and engage with all of these experts on the Slack Chef uh, channel. In closing, I'd like to uh, cover um, just closing thoughts. Why don't we go and do a round robin here of closing thoughts. Uh, let's, why, why don't we start with you, Lokesh? What is your kind of tip? Don't make sure, you know, for our users to make sure to not forget about as we uh, go around the horn. Lokesh, why don't you start with you? Yeah, sure, Alan. So the key takeaway, one of the key takeaways which I want to highlight here is like the waiver feature. Uh, the waiver feature is like, uh, which is used to uh, uh, used for skip controls and uh, uh, not 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 for skip controls, but with the with a particular set of time they can set it, and uh, and with proper justification they can uh, uh, apply the waiver uh, feature. So one of the key takeaways waiver feature for me. Yeah. So take a look if you haven't looked at the waiver feature. Make sure to look into it. There's some documentation out there. There's some videos that we already have produced. And if we if you still don't get the answer, read out to Lokesh. He'll be glad to uh, talk to you about um, waivers. Okay, Sharon, what are your closing thoughts? Sure, um, thanks, Alan. Uh, I think one of the biggest uh, closing thoughts or the biggest takeaway for uh, this year's ChefCon would definitely be the concept of remediation. Uh, it's great to have uh, uh, a set of audit system. It's great to show the compliance poster when there are uh, uh, you know, key audits happening. Um, but what really helps between two consecutive audits and what really helps us achieve a continuous compliance is how we can improvise on the audits. 
um, and with the chef remediation feature that really helps you uh, close this loop between uh, two consecutive audits, uh, help you, um, you know, kind of remediate those, uh, those misconfigurations, helps you get into that system hardening that you always wanted. Um, so that would be one of the key features that I would definitely uh, look into. Uh, and also with the remediate that we've built in a ton of content uh, really makes you to um, remediate issues um, which, which were pretty much uncovered during the audits or during the previous audits. Uh, and now you can do all of that without really having a significant uh, uh, code to write on. Um, so that, that's one, one key takeaway that I would really, um, you know, uh, consider from the yeah. Chef 21. Great point. I think remediation is is what we are powerful. It, it is one of our differentiating uh, functionalities and features. So great point. Remediate, remediate, remediate. Uh, Ashwani, um, any closing yes. thoughts? You showed a lot in your demo. What are some of the suggestions? Where do you suggest people start? What, what are some of your you know, closing thoughts? Yeah, I can take our closing thoughts as a data feed. I liked it because we don't have to maintain and report compliance report or and shape client report. We can <clears throat> directly integrate a data feed uh, with and service now or Splunk and we are it's available for and customer whenever they want. So I it, like and, and that's a great point. Data feed is is an incredible uh, functionality that we have because you can integrate it with different tool sets as well. And I and I bet other future integrations are still forthcoming. So stay tuned and uh, we will be launching those in the short term as well. And last but not least, Don, any closing thoughts, parting, parting wishes to our audience? Yeah, I would definitely take a look at the um, out of the box profiles, um, you know, just work with customers when, you know, when you start working with continuous compliance, um, it can be very daunting to kind of figure out what you want to check and how you want to check it. So those serve as a really great baseline to get you started, um, especially when you get into areas like checking Kubernetes and cloud environments and, you know, desktops and all that type of stuff. So um, definitely check those out. Use those as a great benchmark to get started, and then you can build on those uh, pretty easily and rapidly. It's a great point. Great point. And again, if you have any questions, you want to get uh, questions answered or you have suggestions or thoughts, the chef community channel um, Slack on Slack is the way to go. Uh, hopefully you've learned something new from this from this session. Uh, it is being recorded and will be uh, posted on demand. So thank you all for attending my panel of experts. Thank you for uh, a great session and let's go forth and uh, chef compliance all the way.